Oh, you bastard. You like it, though, don't you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I do. Every uh -oh. gun has been checked, and everyone in possession of a gun. Every armed policeman, the two bodyguards. No guardians were present, of course, on your own instructions. If we are to work together, Mr. Norman, don't make debating points at a time like this. The guardians of the realm are being disbanded. It will take time. I know it will take time. Meantime, I do not choose to use them for duties which the police should be able to perform. Well, they should. Cabinet ministers have opened public buildings long before the guardians were ever invented. A guardian wouldn't have allowed Wilson to get so close. A guardian would have shot an unarmed old man coming forward to offer a rose from his garden, and then it would only have been a rose. And an old man would have been dead. As it is, the Home Secretary is dead. One cannot run a country on the assumption of general ill will. If you do, all wills will be ill, your own included. What effect do you have on me, Norman, that I should stand here chopping logic with you when my best friend is dead? Murdered. Well, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be rude to you just because I'm upset. Now, please, please, continue. The angle of entry was downwards and the bullet was from a rifle. But a rifle is too large. No, some can be stripped down and packed into a dispatch case. It takes a little time, of course. But then there was time, since at first everyone was tension was on Wilson, the murderer. And his death was thought to be from some policeman's bullet. I shouted, don't shoot. Yes, you expected one of the police to shoot, or a bodyguard, so did everyone else. So nobody was surprised when the man was shot, or looked inside the building for his killer, who quietly dismantled the rifle, packed it away into some inconspicuous container, removed any trace of his presence, and disappeared. Fascinating. A man is dead, Norman. Two men are dead. If we're to discover who arranged this double death, we shall need to think unemotionally. Oh, I'm being emotional, am I? Geoffrey Hollis was my closest friend. I understand your feelings. Do you? I understand that you have them and they affect you. I didn't know the Home Secretary is a friend. Indeed, I don't, in that sense, as you know, have friends. So I'm unable to share your feelings. I regret the loss, of course. Well, that's something to be sure. Now, you used the word fascinating to describe this murder. You used it almost admiringly, I thought. Why? The complexity of it. Hmm? Madness about the whole affair. The marksman who shot Wilson could just as easily have shot Geoffrey Hollis. No, no, I've explained that. He'd never have escaped. Then consider the affair as propaganda. If a concealed sniper shoots the Home Secretary, public sympathy is with a dead man and so with the government. But if the murderer is a poor old man, alone in the world, crazed with grief, because his only son has been hanged, a boy of 19 whom the Home Secretary might decently have reprieved, Sympathy goes the other way. Yes, yes, I The see. people who saw the incident don't know about our Mr. Unknown with a rifle. They think Wilson was killed by a trigger-happy policeman. It's even remotely possible this might actually have happened and saved Mr. Unknown the job. Fascinating. That's better. I don't know why it always has to be after lunch. Complaining? Only about the time you choose. Because after a long day spent with patients, I'm emotionally exhausted by nightfall. And in the mornings, I'm in far too much of a rush. Anyway, it's traditional. Once a marriage settles down, making uh. love becomes an afternoon affair. And since most husbands don't work at home as I do, it's not merely afternoons. It's weekend afternoons. Specifically, Sunday afternoons. That's your marital lot. Once a week? Oh, well, some of the randier husbands, as I understand it, may manage a clumsy breaststroke in the typing pool of a midweek. Uh, but that's not having it off at home. That's an away match. One seldom wins an away match. While the wives... You are talking about love. Do you realise that? Yeah. see a lot of it in my line of business. God, you are cold-blooded sometimes. You weren't complaining of cold blood a moment ago. Quite the contrary. You do have it off, though, sometimes, don't you, Frank? Away matches. Even though you work at home. Heaven knows where. Heaven may, I don't. Now, look, love. Why spoil? We've only just... I know what we've only just. I know very well, and I know you. You treat me like a child. You can see I'm working up to something, that keen psychiatrist's eye. It seizes on the first symptom. She's going to start one of her states, you say to yourself. So you quickly pop in a sweetie to stop it. Well, you can afford to. You've got a lot of sweeties. I don't get them all by no means. Look, if I treat you like a child, it's because you behave like a child. You're jealous. Yes. It's not a grown-up emotion. Jesus, and you wonder why I throw things. I don't wonder why you throw things. I know bloody well why you throw things. I know you better than you know yourself. Why do you make me unhappy? I don't, love. I don't. Jealousy makes you unhappy. It makes anybody unhappy. 
There's no known cure for jealousy by sweeties or anything else. But if you and I go to bed, it's because we both want to. And don't spoil your own pleasure in it by thinking it's a bribe. I like sweeties too, you know. I'm not some kind of mechanical pleasure giver. I'm your husband. And going to bed is something for us both. Now, I'm going back to work. Never answered my question, though, did you? Consider the old man, Wilson. He's got a grudge against the government, and particularly, if he were led along that line of thought, against the man who could have reprieved his son and didn't. You assume he was led? I think almost certainly. But let's go slowly. At first, he makes a nuisance of himself and is sent for psychiatric counselling. He seems actually to have seen Benedict, a little below Benedict's level there, I should have thought. However, Benedict's opinion was that the grudge feelings would work themselves out, the man wasn't mad or even likely to be a persistent nuisance, welfare should keep an eye on him. Well, the welfare services were overstretched, I take it, and didn't. No, a social worker visited him. He seemed calmer and announced his intention of looking for a job. He didn't want to go back to the electricity board because he was the object of talk, he said, and, uh, what was it? Uh, people looked at him sideways. Well, they would. We know the job he found. And Benedict was wrong. He isn't often wrong. Well, you couldn't be expected to know that someone would get to Wilson and work on him. But did anyone notice Wilson with a stranger? No. Ah. Well, if we should decide not to censor what's happened and give it to the press and television, large pictures of Wilson, have you seen this man within the last month? You wish that done? It's a little late, but it can be done. Means you don't. Well, it's an interesting balance, I agree. The harm that publicity could do against the good we might get from someone coming forward who actually saw. Your reasons? Nothing which shows a government to be vulnerable should ever be published, particularly when it's something that could be copied. Yes. Have you considered, indeed, that this killing may not have been the first? It's no good saying, watch the papers. There's never anything in the papers. Well, it's no good thinking I'm going to lead you to every contact you need. Sooner or later, they'll make a connection. What do we know about this man, Superintendent? Well, sir, three weeks before the incident, he was sent to see Dr. Benedict. Ah, interesting coincidence. It's not on. Did I use you for my little job in Cornwall? Four dead G's and a lovely suicide by the killer. You don't appreciate me. Right. How did you find him? Happy chance, dear. I was doing my bring your beauty into your lovely home bit all over the southwest, you know, knocking on the door with my little case of samples, and I reached Dunrovin. May I see the lady of the house, says I. And there he is instead, all decked up in a dimity apron, reeking of whiskey and blubbing like a baby. Ah, yes, there were lovely lino tiles in the hall and coloured glass in the door. I may go mad. Physician, heal thyself. Anyway, I soon got the story out of him. Apparently his wife was a bit of a tease and he was older, so she'd gone too far one night at the Golden Gourmet discotheque and landed up on the beach with ten G's banging away in turn, followed by a nervous breakdown, slashed wrists and straight into the bindia. And he'd already been on the bottle most of the week, so we had a little bit more whiskey, got rather matey. Then when it was nicely dark, I took him to the top of the cliff and hid in the bushes with a gun. It was the cliff path, you see, that the G's used to come into town. He bagged three altogether and wounded the fourth. Then I thought it was safer, so I pushed him over. Well, he was pissed out of his mind. There wasn't any pain involved. Then the wounded G was making such a lot of noise that I broke the rules and pushed him over the cliff as well. Very ill-mannered young man. Kept grabbing at my ankles. You do enjoy it, don't you? Yes, I do. Well, my dear, you must admit it. Much more interesting than work. Just an idea if there were any other cases. An assassination? Well, anything of that sort, unsolved. Any other Mr. Unknowns that uh, might have some similarity to our Mr. Unknown? The matter for computer analysis, the problem would be in deciding which were meaningfully similar cases. Well. well, you have the bullet from Wilson's body. Does that tell us anything? We know the type of rifle. It's not in general use. An army issue? No, on issue to the Guardians only. No other force has it. I see. You might have begun with that information. No, I don't think so. I beg you not beg. to... Beg? 
I don't, I can't deny the possibility that a guardian might have fired that shot. There may be traitors among the guardians as among any other body of men. No more than that. No plot, no coup d'etat. The general made his coup d'etat. It succeeded. He's accepted you. Why should he or I or anyone else have Hollis killed? No. Wouldn't be logical. Rifles have been stolen. There was a case in Cornwall recently. Four guardians shot and pushed over a cliff. We recovered the bodies, but not the weapons. Shot? Another Mr. Unknown? No, no, a local man. The trouble was his wife was a messy business. There was some kind of mass, a, se a sexual... Ten men involved. You tell him she was raped by ten I'm men. not. She invited it. The evidence is clear. However, she seems to have been mentally unstable and had a breakdown afterwards. The husband got drunk and ambushed four guardians, and he committed suicide afterwards. A Quornby should be self-sufficient, Joan. Most of us don't know each other. I know more than most because of the nature of my work, and I'm more at risk than any of you. When you go out that door, I don't know your real name or how to find you, but if you were questioned... Oh, don't worry, dear. I've always got my Happy Valley pill. You might not always get the chance to use it. I hope you never have the occasion. There's going to be a rumpus over, Hollis, bound to be. Well, that's the intention. We've done good by stealth for too long. I prefer the quiet life myself. Oh, so do I. Quite honestly, so do I. But what does that make us? Murderers, no better. Spoilers, breakers. People who destroy for the sake of destruction. Do you have this argument often? Yeah, with myself all the time, yes. That's the trouble with being a psychiatrist, I know too much about myself. I know that there's a little boy inside me that just enjoys breaking things up. I don't know that I could kill, personally, but I do enjoy planning it. Mm, the horrifying thing is that it's not all that difficult. I was quite surprised. Yeah, well, you don't like men, Joan. <laughs> You're joking. Oh, no, you like having them, but you don't care for them personally. Anyway, the fun is over and we move on. From now on, the government has got to know, oh, not about us, nothing about Cornby, but that there is an active resistance. I hope this stuff doesn't hurt. Funny. It was only the other day the, uh, the Hollis has invited us round to dinner. The Prime Minister was there with his mum. I put the seed into Hobson's mind quite deliberately. I really ponged it. My poor Geoffrey, I said, you'd be the first to go. They're disbanding the G's, did you know? It can't be bad. Oh, it could be if they did, but they won't. Not now. Get tough with the terrorists, that'll be the new line. It'll have to be. Hobson won't like it, but he'll be forced to it. And within a year, all his fine paternalistic do-gooding will have changed into barbed wire, machine guns, arrests and executions, suspicion and fear, with the innocent suffering more than the guilty, because, of course, the guilty always know enough to dodge. Uh, you won't need to come to me for Cornby material then, Joan. People with a grudge we can use and dispose of, like poor Sam Wilson. There'll be hate in every street. And then perhaps the Prime Minister will remember our dinner party. He's a logical man. He'll see the logic of it. And he'll say to himself, I didn't do it for this. It's time to stop. No. Well, think about it. If we are in the process of disbanding the Guardians, we shouldn't find fresh work for them to do. Meanwhile, the organisation exists. The files, the men exist. To be misguided not to use them in a case of this importance. The police will have access to the files? Are you suggesting that would be refused? The police were involved. They were responsible for security. The Guardians, on your own insistence, oh, were yes. not. Mr Unknown may be a policeman or have contacts in the police. The Guardians' intelligence unit has a file especially devoted to the police. Is that the plans you have for them, to investigate police involvement? The police are overextended and undermanned. I wish to give the Guardians a larger part. They're better equipped for it. No. Prime Minister, whether you like them or not, whether they're to be disbanded or not, these men were recruited as guardians of the realm. That's their job. Let them do it. We are the guardians of this realm, Norman. And a realm which needs or tolerates the G's is not worth guarding. Ten men on a beach and my own son was beaten up, you may remember, when they planted drugs on him. Very well, I'll restrict the guardians to the role you suggest for them. Thank you. I'd like to give you a warning, if I have your permission to speak in personal terms. You have it. Don't lose your grip. What? Well, a month ago, you could have disbanded me, sacked me, moved me. You still can. You kept me because I'm interested in efficiency. Indeed, it's my only interest, my art, my love. I'll serve anyone who uses me properly. 
I'll serve you loyally and completely. But if you lose your grip, if you allow purely emotional considerations to make you less than you are, I should find it difficult to work for you. Brighter, you see. I don't mean cleverer, I mean just sort of brighter. We were both at Oxford. I was reading English and I used to act a bit and write poems and, you know. Yes. And he was such a shy, bumpy young man. He hadn't read anything. But he was sexy in a sort of provincial way. And when you got to know him, he was... Anyway, I had to push him a bit at first, you know, socially. We didn't have any friends. I had all the friends. And building a practice, it helps to know people. Only after a while, he began to know more people than I did, and I found I wasn't quite so interested. Well, people are rather boring, really. And having the twins kept me out of things as ghastly for our feeds. Were you breastfed? You don't look it. Don't I... bother to reply in detail. It's such a pleasure to talk to anyone. Frank and I sort of snipe at each other in public quite often. I don't mean to. Actually, I think I go to bed with almost anyone who showed an interest in me. I mean, me personally, not Mrs. Benedict. Just out of gratitude. I don't, of course. Aren't you the man I talked to on the phone? You said you'd send someone along, but I recognised the voice. I came myself. Was there anyone else to send? Doesn't matter. Well, it's because I'm high in the alphabet. W. Bertram detection. I get a lot of phone calls. But they don't always lead to work. What's the W stand for? <laughs> Wilf. I don't think you should wear a hat, Wilf. I thought when I saw you, that hat doesn't suit him. It's not meant to. Hats are a form of disguise. They alter the shape of the head. I have a collection of hats. Oh, well, if it's professional. I used to choose all Frank's clothes. I took over from his mother. He never had the slightest clothes since. Two years ago, he started to buy his own shirts. Oh, I am sorry. They don't have till death do us part anymore in the marriage service. But you do think it's going to last forever? A year after the twins were born, I came home early from the park one day and found him having it off on the sofa with the corsic on her pair. Having it off. One shouldn't mind about these things. One really shouldn't mind. Oh, one should. And I do. You have more than an inkling, then, of adultery. It's not evidence you require. Evidence? For a divorce. I hadn't thought about a divorce. Ah. I don't know what I'd thought. I don't know who he's having it off with at the moment, if that's what you mean. Whom? I just thought I'll put a detective onto him. With what object? Does one have to have an object? It's not cheap. Detection. I have expenses. Overheads. <sighs> if one has an object, as it might be divorced... I just want to, to surprise him. That's the object. In? On. On? The job. No. Once upon a time, Wilf, I felt I owned my husband. I knew where he was, what he was doing, whom he was with. If we were together in a room just reading, I knew the moment he took his eyes off the page and looked across at me. Now there are whole areas of his life I don't know about. Not just work, people. And as I guess, women. Because I am pretty sure he does have it off from time to time, for one reason, because he won't say he doesn't. And my husband hates telling lies, even to me. I'm often bored. I'm beginning to feel a little frightened, a little left out. I want to know, and when I have the information, I'll decide what to do with it. It's not usual. Wilf, I think you and I both know you're not in a position to turn down work. Oh, there is one other thing. I want a guardian from the intelligence section. Not any guardian, or even any particular guardian. I want an idealistic guardian. An officer, of course. Intelligent and idealistic. The second quality in this case being more important than the first. Well, there must be one. There must be one. Find one.
A minor infarction, or in the common manner of speaking, heart attack, may appear without any preliminary warning at all, usually as an acute pain, sometimes described by the patient as crushing, in the chest by the nipple line. This pain may then travel either in rare cases upwards and into the jaw, or more usually down the arm and into the little finger. A minor infarction is not in itself dangerous, except in as much as it signals the probability of a major infarction. We could get a coloured servant. Goodness, are they bringing back slavery? Anyway, Mrs. Robbins does most of the housework. If we had someone living in, we wouldn't have such a problem over sitters. We've had someone living in. There are disadvantages in that too, if you remember. Oh, I see. You mean if she was coloured, you wouldn't be tempted in the same way. If we had someone living in, you could get a job, as I've been suggesting for some time that you should. Yes, you have. We're on top of each other too much. <laughs> no wonder there's friction. And what job should I get? Not social work, because my... Oh, get any bloody job you like. Just get out of my hair. Frank. I'm sorry. I'm dealing with neurotic behaviour all day long. I've used up all my patience. I can't cope with any more of it for my own wife. Anyway, it's all notional. I don't want anyone else to look after the children. It's about the only thing I enjoy. Are you going up to them before you have another? I am not having another, and I am going up. Oh, look, love, I don't mean to snap. Feel free. This particular state of yours has been going on rather longer than usual. I mean, I'm beginning to feel neurotic myself. I had to go to, out to lunch with Donaldson today, as you know. There was a man in a ludicrous hat. I could swear he was following me. Was he? Well, no, I don't think so. There was a man in a hat. He was going in the same direction. I saw him again after lunch. I suppose he lived around here. Good God, there he is again. He's still there in a different hat. And he's looking at his watch and going away. Well, six o'clock. I expect he works office hours. Daddy, you're late! I don't know what's got into you recently. It's really like one of those sexual cases. Uh, we really want another one. What? Well, with these sexual murders, it's not until you've had, as you might say, three or four little girls done away with that you can recognise a pattern. Direct investigations have come to a dead end and there isn't any evidence to suggest murder for personal reasons. Consequently, the list of suspects could run into tens of thousands. There's enough evidence on sexual deviancy in the data bank to give us a child murderer within weeks. This case is more complicated. Tens of thousands? And the field is so wide, sir. Are you suggesting the country is seething with discontent? Oh, no, sir, I'm not. If there were more active discontent, my job would be easier. It's too much apathy. You don't know where you stand. Take the trades unions. The unions became illegal organizations. Union funds were redistributed among the members. Very popular move. Thank you. A known communist and Trotskyist, union leaders were rounded up, sent to the rehabilitation center where they remain in every degree of comfort at the public expense. No problems. Until something like this happens. And then everyone becomes a suspect. Because among all the apathy, you don't know where the resentments lie buried. Then again... Yes, thank you. You've made your point. I'm afraid he's on to you. He recognises your hats. But I never wore the same. Hat. That's how he knows. Oh, dear. I shall have to vary him out his guise. Couldn't you try wearing no hat at all? I think we can manage something a little more subtle than that. Will, forgive me, but have you actually ever followed anyone before? Frequently! Of course, they were usually expecting it. In cases of divorce, the guilty party usually desires his freedom as strongly as the innocent, or often more so. There's something very worrying about innocence, in my humble opinion. Has anyone any constructive ideas? Captain Buckley. It's not strictly within the Guardian's terms of reference in this case. We're restricted, as you know. Also, Mr Norman and I are in some disagreement about the actual means. Hmm? What's your idea? It ties in with police thinking, except that I... Uh, that we don't believe we should wait for another... Another cabinet minister to be murdered, nor do I. We feel that, although other possibilities shouldn't be ruled out, it's likely that this was a political assassination and the work of an organisation rather than an individual. We think it's odd that no one's tried to claim any credit for it. Yes, it is odd. If they did, if we knew what political complexion they were, 
it would make the list of suspects much shorter. As it is, the ball's in our court, and I think we have to play it. Ah, set a trap. And what would you use for bait? I think that might be a matter of high policy. Yes, okay. You said there was a disagreement between you and Mr. Norman. What is it? I believe, sir, that whatever decision is reached about bait, the actual subject should be a guardian or a policeman in some form of disguise. Mr. Norman believes that this would substantially increase the risk of failure. You want real cheese in your trap? Red meat, not a rubber bone. Ah, cabinet minister, for instance? Might be best. Well, I agree that this is a matter of high policy. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, <clears throat> playing scores with Peter. You're back about seven. Hmm? Long game. We'll be having a drink afterwards. Thought the point about squash was to lose weight. What do you think of young Barclay? I think you must have gone to considerable pains to choose him. Why did you let him tell us all that you and he were in disagreement? Because you'll be more likely to make use of him if you know he has a mind of his own. Hmm. And were you in disagreement? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Captain Barclay evidently has more regard for the members of my cabinet than you have. No, he believed the civilians ought not to be placed at risk. Soldiers, policemen and guardians, he says, except danger is a part of the job. The Minister for Social Services has no such obligation. Dame Henrietta, it's a curious choice. No, appropriate, for two reasons. The first is that of all the cabinet, she's the most expendable. I'm inclined to believe that you would have sacked her within the year anyway. Would have? Will do, if she survives. Uh-huh. And your second reason? We need a suitable public occasion. And the sterilization program for genetically undesirable males provides it. It'd be very easy to devise some ceremony to publicize the success of the Perthshire experiment. Presentation to the first ten volunteers, a check, a medal of honor each. We'll announce a full radio and television coverage of the ceremony. That should make it attractive to an assassin. And as Minister of Social Services, Dame Henrietta is the obvious person to make the presentation. I take it uh, Captain Barclay objects to Dame Henrietta because she's a woman as well as a civilian. <laughs> Not a very logical objection. It's a very natural one. However, my own objection is more basic. I will not expose any member of my cabinet to a risk that I am not prepared to run myself. I shall go to Perth. We'd better start setting a date, publicising the occasion. I uh, don't think I want to give away any medals, sir. Just telling the truth should be enough. Rub yourself with your tennis shirt while you're still sweaty. Give it that used smell. Yeah, I will in a minute. Okay, what am I going to do? I don't understand it. It's as if he wants to be seen. Today he's a traffic warden. But our people have done that, my love. Follow a suspect, make sure he knows what you're doing. When he's unsettled, talk. What on earth would you reply if he said his name was Quarmby? Well, I'm hardly Quarmby material. Well, maybe the police use the same tactics. You're very cold-blooded about it. But what do you want me to do? Well, I don't know. Advise me. Help me. But well, they can't be on to me. I, d I don't see how they can possibly be on to me. No, it's most unlikely. Oh, Jesus, is that all you can say? And don't lose your temper with me, Frank. I am not your wife. You come here to escape from domestic tension. I came here today because I'm sick with worry. It's been nearly a week now. This ludicrous man and his hats. Today I almost went up to him and said, 
to the one I thought about, I didn't know what to say. Or maybe that's just what he wants you to do. Hmm? The question, are you following me, invites the counter-question, what have you done that I should be? I think if I were the police, I'd put two people on your tail. One to be noticed, and the other one to see what you did about it. God. No, your reason for coming here today was quite innocent. Merely adultery. Ah. Uh. I think you're safe, as long as you see the obvious man. Time to look out is when you think you've shaken him off. It's 6.30, you better get ready. Well, you asked for advice, my love. I asked for help. You can't come to me for that, Frank. You know the rule we made for ourselves. A Quamby in difficulties gets himself out. You'd better get on with your shower. There's no time for a real bath. The odd thing is that if they know enough to have you followed, it ought to be enough to question you. Well, they never even asked me about Wilson. They have the report, that's all. It was routine. Well, so may this be. A random check. Like when the customs suddenly make you open your suitcase. I think the best thing for you to do is to wait and see. Oh. It's all right. You can slip out now without being heard. He's in the shower. I can't go out like this. I got so bored hiding in your kitchen, I put in white on my face. I couldn't talk with a crack. He says he's being followed. Oh, Lord. Now, Frank is beginning to get dangerous. I think it's time I moved on. Close up from now on. You can see nothing. In turn it off. Then civilization is harming mankind. Now we are changing all that. And with the cooperation and encouragement of the good people of Persia. Nothing. It's not surprising. The place was so stiff with security, you couldn't stretch your feet beneath the table without kicking a plain-clothes policeman in the crutch. It's hardly my fault. If they'd agreed to put up Dame Henrietta, we'd have had a third of those precautions. They'd probably have got her, and we'd have got one of them. Help yourself to a drink. Thanks. You are a little cold-blooded, aren't you? I hope entirely so. Only a fool acts in hot blood. It's a fault. I can't agree. It may lead you to misjudge people. You don't make enough allowance for their decent instincts. Hobson's an honourable man. He was bound to offer himself once a cabinet member had been suggested. But a disguised policeman... What an odd texture you've got on your tabletop. Is it inlaid? It's a jigsaw puzzle underneath. Please don't rumple the cloth. My grandfather's very keen on jigsaws. He's 83. He says they kill time till time kills him. He gets very touchy if you move the pieces. Indeed. Well, you may be right. Perhaps I made an error of judgment in this case. I've had something on my mind recently. It may have affected me. I love Dad when he's like that. Prime All forthright on furious. Well, it's true. What he said is true. I wonder what the good people of Perth should think about it. Because it's degrading to be sterilised. Mm, you wouldn't think so. I wouldn't. No one who practices birth control anyway would, but the people who should. You notice how careful he was not to say mentally subnormal. They would. It's confidential, the operation. He said so. Mm. If you live in a crowded street in a working-class area or a small village, nothing's confidential. People always know what's happening to their neighbours, and if they don't know, they guess. 
And giving medals on television doesn't make a bit of difference. No. Clearly, I must to Scotland if I'm to investigate the nature of discontent. Not tonight, though. Oh, no. Not tonight. Something I'd like you to do for me. Willingly. I mentioned earlier that something was troubling me. Yes. Well, I've experienced, been experiencing, the symptoms of cardiac weakness. What does your doctor say? Since my childhood, I've never consulted a doctor. But a heart Please attack. understand, Captain Barclay, that I have devoted my life to an ideal of efficiency. You're said to be an idealist yourself. You should understand devotion. I do. Efficiency requires a single mind, a total concentration. But I know that in time I shall grow old and become less efficient. I'm a realist. I accept that. In the meantime, I don't choose to be reminded of it, because that would distract me, and I will not be distracted. What do you want me to do? Well, if cabinet ministers are subject to physical attack from some unknown organization, so may I be. What if this were a deliberate attack on my efficiency? If I were being poisoned, you follow me? I think so. If the heart attacks were being induced by some drug, now, I've considered every common article of food and drink which I habitually consume, and there's only one which I always buy from the same place. Curiously strong peppermints are not so easy to find as once they were. I want you to have these analysed, without, of course, letting you be known where they come from. When I know the result of the analysis, I shall know how to act. and leaving the squash courts at 6.45pm and returning home. I'm afraid I couldn't enter the changing room, spectators gallery, a bar myself, owing to the conspicuousness of my disguise. Who's this Peter he plays with? Gentleman in the building. All seems very innocent. Should we call off the hunt? If you like. But he is worried. He's got something on his conscience. I might be able to offer you a reduction in terms. Why? If you're dissatisfied. Don't be silly. It's not your fault. Besides, I enjoy talking to you. I've never met a detective before, let alone a private one. I always wanted to be a real detective. But you don't start straight into the CID. You have to be an ordinary policeman first. And I lack this physique. I have the fleur for disguise, but I should be quite out of my depth if it came to violence. I've almost forgotten what you're following him for. I just enjoy your company. And hearing your report it gives a sort of... Focus to the day. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Wilf. I'd like you to know that I enjoy talking to you, Mrs. Benedict. There are many people I can talk to, owing to having been an only child. But I'm beginning to feel we have a relationship. Hmm. Gum Arabic, corn syrup, gelatin. Sugar, oil of peppermint. Nothing else. A little household dust. Thank you. Wife never comes in here unless invited. However, uh... 
Now I've got you here, I don't know what to say to you. I'd be happy to leave. Why are you dressed up like that? That's none of your business. You're not a transvestite. Don't try and pretend it. The other day you were a parking attendant. Before that it was hats. You've been following me. I want to know why. I suppose your colleague is down there somewhere keeping out of sight. What colleague? Well, you have to have one. You follow me, obviously. He observes my reactions to being followed. I'm a lone wolf. Can I believe you? Look, you can't follow someone as obviously as that for me. I wouldn't say it was so obvious. I might have gone to the police and complained. But you didn't, did no, you? No, I didn't. Guilty conscience. What makes you say that? Well, I have been following you, haven't I? I've used my I've eyes. I've done nothing. Squash. Oh. Never went near the squash court. Well, you know about that. She's moved now. Gone, Scarpard. Has she? Oh, you may have worked up a sweat, but you weren't playing squash. What? Adultery! It's all here in my notes. I bear damaging witness for the plaintiff. What plaintiff? Your wife. Your wife has engaged me to follow you. She had her suspicions about your behaviour. One can't imagine why you should think I was shadowing you for any other reason. No one can't imagine. I mean, there's no other possible reason why anyone should... Is that reference to my colleague? Why should I need a colleague? I haven't got a colleague. There's no reason. No. That woman moving away immediately afterwards. Well, that's coincidence. Yes. I've always been interested in theories of detection, I was telling your wife. What am I to do with you? I'm very discreet, believe me, known for discretion. As a private inquiry agent, keeping my own counsel comes what naturally to me. What am I to do with you? I never told your wife about your lady friend in the mansion block with the squash courts. I didn't want to upset her. I've grown very fond of Mrs Benedict, in a pure way. I don't imagine you know where she's moved to. But it'd be easy enough for anyone to find out once the hunt was up. She had another lady with her. I don't think they were more than friends. I've never killed anyone before. I never thought I could. <laughs> I don't start! I always knew I might have to. I accepted that. But you don't. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to worry. I've tried to explain that to you. I'm, I'm a man of discretion. In any case, I don't know what you're on about. I don't know what you're actually doing. You could be engaged in any criminal activity. I'm the least idea. I couldn't prevent it. There's no reason why anyone should ask me questions, and even if they did, I shouldn't tell them. Well, Mr. Benedict, he's just someone I've followed for a while in the way of business. The merest adulterer! Please be quiet. What? I can't concentrate. If I'm to kill you, it must be done painlessly. But there are some means I can't use. No drugs, you see. There, there might be traces in the body at an autopsy, and I... I can't shoot you. It can't be a professional killing. Nothing to arouse suspicion. But if it's amateur, then dressed as you are, I can get rid of the body without any suspicion at all. When there's nobody about to get the car, drive your body down to the docks and prop it up against a wall. Yes, nobody's going to bother with much with investigation. It'll be obvious what happened to you. Dressed up, made up, frightened but excited. Down the commercial road you went, and in, uh, in one of those pubs you picked up a, a docker. Or a lorry driver. Only he was drunk. And he didn't realise that you weren't a woman until he had you up against a wall. And when he found out... Yes. If I wanted to make it really convincing, I'd batter you to death. But of course I can't do that. Frank, where's the door locked? Eleanor, uh, look, uh, please go away. I've got something rather difficult on. Oh, sorry. Mrs. Benedict, help me, please! I think you'd better open the door, Frank. Uh, 
Are you all working overtime? Oh, I thought I owed it to you. Are you found out? Yes. Too late. Too late for what? He says he has to kill me! Kill Will? I didn't know You're his threatening name. threatening him. Nobody said he was only doing No, his job. I'm not threatening him. He means Wilf it. is the threat. Oh. It's one of those unhappy coincidences, Mrs. Benedict. It's something. Well, I don't know what it is. You see, it's something criminal. Criminal? You could say so. But you've never been in the least. Well, you could involved. say that. But he doesn't know what it is. He, he knows says. something is. I can't let him go, Eleanor. He only has to start people asking questions. But I wouldn't! I could be shot by the G's. Or I could be executed as an accessory to murder in the more usual way. Or I could be sent off to that bloody rehabilitation centre to live in a permanent high on cannabis until my brain rotted. And not only me, others too. But you heard him say he wouldn't. I can't take the risk. I wish you hadn't come in here, Eleanor. Why? Are you going to kill me too? No! No. Let him go, Frank. How can I? Look, people with less incriminating evidence than Wilf. They've been shot. They've been gassed in their homes. They've been pushed over a cliff in Cornwall. How can I let you go? I do follow the logic. Now, go away, Eleanor. You think I'm going to go away? Look, if you, you try and stop me, you'll get bruised and he'll die painfully because I shan't be in control. But I'm a doctor. Now, if you both cooperate, I can make sure he feels no pain at all. I could phone for the police. I could shout for help. Go on, then. If it'll help your decision, Mrs. Benedict, I'm rather a solitary person in my private life. Almost lonely, really. If you try to escape, I could get in his way. The door's locked. We'd better get it over with. If you'll just relax. No, relax completely. It'd be easier for us both. If Mrs. Benedict had talked to me as she used to, I might be able to relax more easily. I really am. I'm, I'm very sorry about this. Please, talk to him. The thing I hated most about him was the way he always used to take over the conversation. I'd be talking to someone at a party and he'd simply come up and join us, and in no time at all, I'd be doing all the talking and... He really is dead. Yes. You killed him. Yes. But you're a doctor. Yes. Why? I mean, really, why? If I said, for England? It doesn't mean anything. Well, for democracy, then, for freedom. It doesn't mean anything. Oh, well, then just say I did it to save my own bloody neck. And for you and the children. Oh. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> 